Today, I'm going to be working on this 48-foot lineup where I find a leak on the far left side 12-foot case. There's four cases here on this lineup. The leak detector picks up very heavily the concentration of refrigerant on the left side case, but I still thoroughly leak search the whole thing. The bottom railing, the top evaporator coil. Once I confirm it, I pump the whole circuit down, then I recover the remaining pressure so that I can cut out the top gravity coil from the circuit and bypass it so that the bottom will flow and still circulate refrigerant while the top is cut out. Mm. Definitely stronger down there. Oh yeah. Hardly none down here. Yeah, not very much. Now let's go all the way back over here and see. Woo! You can smell it in there. Or not you can smell it. This thing can smell it. Freaking chicken out of the way. So, also, this case has a serious defrosting issue. See how there's freaking ice in here? Like, oh my god, this is a gravity system. Air, cold air is supposed to be able to come out of those coils and rush down into the 
into the bottom. You ever seen that happen? It's pretty cool. Well, that can't happen when it's like this. It's all because some fool who doesn't know how to program came in here and we've got four defrosts per day for 20 minutes each. That's real sparky, huh? So we're gonna defrost it. We're gonna defrost it like this. Probably for a lot of the time that I'm here on this call. There we go. Now we're gonna defrost. So, as you know, most of you know, by doing that, when that thing comes out of defrost, it's, it won't start cooling again. As you know. So, almost got it. Halfway through. Yeah, now we're getting somewhere good. Look at all that filth down there. I don't know what the hell that is, but it's gross. Wash this shit out of here. Frozen, it's, it's frozen it is. Pounding it with a freaking knife. Of course it's gonna leak. Ugh, that's tough, you guys. Oh my god. Well, for this for the sake of the rest of the meat in the store, I'll close this valve off and turn the rest of the circuit on. And we're gonna leak search all this right here. Hopefully, I don't have to get into there. Yeah, that's enough pressure to, that's enough pressure to get some results. You have to excuse me, guys. I wasn't using a very good resolution and frame rate. somewhere guys no no water Whew. man you can't get water in your damaged tin dude as long as you got a ball that's floating like that you know you ain't got water in it man do whatever you have to do to not get water in your H10 whatever you have to do I mean, hell, don't leak search if you have to. It gets that bad. If you get water in your freaking H10. Notice how I'm keeping my, my tip pointed down because of all this damn water that's falling.
Ooh. It's got to be there, you guys. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, I think I've had enough of that. I ain't subjecting my sleep detector to any more possible water. Anymore. You know, I probably spent about an hour or an hour and a half trying to find a nice source of big bubbles. But all I kept finding was a bunch of little bubbles all over the place. Everywhere. This thing is so old and so full of tiny little micro leaks. Hundreds of them, maybe thousands, I don't know. These are just the pictures I had to take so that I could attach it to the invoice. But those leaks were almost on every tube at every fin. So I'm gonna isolate this top coil here. I'm gonna make a little loop right there, make it go back, I'm gonna cut this one out because I've gotta isolate this leak. This dozens or hundreds of uh, micro leaks throughout this coil, primarily on this side. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut it out and I've gotta pump this whole circuit down. So I do that by well, one, I closed my valve up there, but I think it was still feeding because I can still hear it in here. So I set this up for a two hour and 15 minute defrost and just now enabled defrost. I did that by going to defrost time and going 145 minutes and then enabling the manual defrost by holding the two buttons. So I've got two hours and 25 or two hours and 15 minutes. I'm gonna set an alarm for two hours. That way I know uh, what's gonna happen. But right now it's pumping down. My alarm for two hours from now, and I'm setting it to say defrost ends in 15 minutes. All right. Yep. Yep. All right. Good to go. I made a short not too long ago saying how these things can come in handy to use them temporarily. So the reason I've got to pump this whole thing down is because they're all connected. This whole lineup of cases is connected on that circuit. They give me a valve right here. It would be nice if they would put one on the suction line too, because then I could isolate this case by itself. But I'm gonna mount this temporarily on my, on my liquid side because I don't have any liquid line schraders like this one. So I'm gonna mount it temporarily and then I'm going to seal it back up and take it off and seal it with the torches before I, I close it back up. I told you all this before, but these little these little kits are a perfect place to get an eighth of an inch Allen wrench. So you want to set it up in a, on, a, on a piece of the pipe that's nice and straight. You don't want to put it on the curve. You want to put it on a straight section, like right there. So I'm going to set it up. I want to make sure that I'm going to be able to put my gauge on it, okay? And then when I tighten it, I'm going to tighten them all evenly. So I'm going to, I'm going to get this one down, this one down, this one down, so that it closes down and clamps down on the pipe in a straight or flush type of manner or even. I don't want to crank down on one side and leave the other one all the way all the way loose. I want it to crank down good and smooth and straight. So they're all pretty snug. Now I'll just turn each of them a little bit at a time. Make sure that it closes nice. Starting to get tight. I have to rotate this. I have to rotate this and do it this way now. And you want to crank it on each of them until they stop. They will stop. I've had maybe one of these strip on me in all the, the times I've done it, which is quite a few times. I'd say maybe at least at least a hundred of these things I've installed over the last eight years more though I don't know I can tell you I'm gonna recover the pressure that's in here isolate the coil and then I'm gonna pull a vacuum on it the only thing I'm gonna go short of is, is using nitrogen while I'm soldering pulled out my little uh, cord depressor then once my hose is on I can go ahead and pierce it and then it won't actually release the pressure until you back off of it There it is. 
We are holding at about 50 pounds of pressure right now. Isolate it from here and cut it out and loop it here or I can do it over here. I think I might do it over here. I have more room to work with my tubing cutters. You gotta watch your cylinders, make sure they don't get hot. If they get hot as they go up, this one goes up too. So this piece is gonna go right down there perfectly. I'll have a stub going out that way. I'm gonna cut my lines right about here and then right about here. And once I take this one loose, it'll scoot over and they'll fit on that perfectly. Always sand before you cut. And when you sand, sand enough, you know, go wide, go bigger, like what I'm doing right there, so that after you cut with your cutters, you'll have enough for a coupling to slip on it and then it will still be soldering onto something clean. I will buy some new gauges soon. Since I got so many of you guys watching, I'll buy some new gauges. Okay? I know that's what y'all are all thinking. I just, I, you know, I don't need them. I mean, these work, they work for me. So, you know, whatever. But I'll buy some for you guys.
See if we can get this thing down and do a vacuum. This big ass case, big ass circuit. See how long that takes. I'm doing good, you guys. Look at this. I still got 53 minutes before my two hour alarm goes off. Alright guys, now normally I'd go longer, but this is uh, as good of enough of a vacuum as I need. This is a, a huge rack, and if I got any moisture sucked in there, it's no big deal. It then came out already, if I did, I guarantee it. That's, that's a good enough vacuum for me. So we're going to release these lines, open the valves, take it out of defrost, and charge the rack up probably. See how much water is still, or how much ice is still up there? Like, man, it's a lot. This thing's been defrosted for like four hours. All the rest of these things are gonna start leaking too. So I changed this back. I did have it on 145 minute defrost time. I changed it back to 45. And we're doing six, 45 minute defrosts, six times per day instead of four. Okay, well that's it for my repair. I got my repair done. And, uh... All this crap back in here. But I ain't putting all the chicken and shit back in there. That's like up to them. I took it out because they weren't here. So, you know, whatever. Um, so... My temperature sensor down here. Here's the only catch. My temperature sensor was up here on this coil that I just bypassed. So I moved it down there and I actually stuck it inside the pipe that's coming up here so it can hang out. It's set for, for 20. I'm gonna have to keep a little eye on it while I charge it up with the refrigerant perhaps. I'm measuring 36 right there. And I'm actually reading over here 34, so it's, it's pretty close. I don't think I want it to go down to 20 though. I'm gonna set it to 25. <clears throat> to 26 you got to push and hold this button by the way until it goes back to what it says for it to for it to take on the ke2 in case you didn't know and that's it guys thanks for watching the video see you later